Usually there's an instinct, an idea, and when the instinct resonates between the three of us, then we feel like we need to make it, bring it to life. And each time it comes to life, it depends who's guiding this instinct to come to life. So whether it's a pattern who's guiding it, whether it's one of us who's guiding it, whether it's a textile or a technology, that dictates how this idea is going to come to life. Lovely smell. By being um, involved in all kinds of intricate geometry, it required us to go further and further into means of expressing that geometry. So that led us directly into 3D printing because that enabled us to express exact geometry. I met uh, Gabby and Dee and Angie through a mutual friend, Bradley Rothenberg, who had been doing some of the earlier work with them, um, some earlier uh, textile work. I had been kind of exploring patterning systems as it relates to architecture and how you kind of tile space. I have always been interested in how you could do similar things in different design disciplines, fashion I think in particular. Um, and when I kind of first met 3s4 and was exposed to their work, I was struck by how they are exploring a similar thing, mainly geometry and how you, you can kind of wrap a form in it or wrap the human body in it in this case. They had a, a relationship with Stratasys, the 3D printing company, to do a dress, kind of sponsoring the, the fabrication of the dress. So when we started, the project was to do a, a single piece, um, one dress form. The most natural way for us to work is to pick a silhouette that we've done before and build on that. Many, in many cases, it may change. In this case, it's a very um, classic 3S4 cut. We basically scanned a person in real life wearing the dress, and then we had the base silhouette to work from. We did play with the Z axis off of that dress. Mm -hmm. Like, because right. you're printing it, you're able to add thickness to this, the surface. So in some parts, like especially the shoulders, it gets bigger in certain areas, and we had to kind of back and forth design the mm -hmm. overall silhouette. And fashion function, in a geometric case, is really about the movement of the human body and how you are articulating that and working with it. Um, and I think all of the pieces are definitely exploring that and interested in that. How you can take a patterning system and apply it across the body and make it change and transform based on the body and on the ergonomics of the body and how the person is, is moving. These are the shoulders. One, two. That's the chest. See, These are the back pieces here and here. So there's center back here. This is the bottom back. So that's your butt here and here. The moment you create a three-dimensional weave, you start thinking about movement in three, di three directions. So instead of a fabric that is stretching on the XY plane, you have a fabric that is uh, stretching on the z-plane. So x, y, z becomes much more agile and much more, um, how would you say, true to your anatomy type of movement. So the fabric will, will be able to emulate your anatomy movement much more directly. How you use technology to reinterpret old ideas is an important thing. There's a lot of different machines and technologies to work with, so the, the exact dimensional constraints that you have to work within are different for every uh, technology. Um, the specific material constraints, like how thin can I go until it breaks, are very different for each technology. So some of the dresses, like oscillation for example, was all printed as flat pieces, and it was printed in a, a rubber-like material so we could bend it into shape. It's really a textile design process, because you're, you're, you're printing out the pattern pieces as geometric swatches, in a way. Um, and you have to know that when you sew that all together, it takes on a three-dimensional shape. My role in the 3D printing uh, division of 3S4 is the manos in the machina part. I'm the one once 
those babies come out of the box and we have to clean them with a toothbrush and then lay them out like a piece of puzzle, make sure that everything is correct. And then I try to come in and figure out how to attach the babies onto, you know, something that is like a layer approximate to human skin, you know, but hold it all together, which is usually like kind of like a, a mesh body shell underneath. And in this case, I used fishing wire. Hold them all into place, you know, because some pieces that are obviously, as you can see here, on the heavier side, really thick and blending into something very intricate and skinny and soft. The contradiction between both materials, which is actually the same material, it's just uh, through the, the variation of thickness, it's like uh, uh, David and Goliath fighting with each other, actually, when they are put next to each other, you know? The whole process is a lot of back and forth between analog and digital processes. So whether we're playing with paper dolls, scanning that into the computer, or scanning a, a paper dress on a person, that goes into the computer, we digitally test it, print some swatches, maybe print a whole piece. Um, but along the way, you are always communicating between different mediums. You know, we're not the first ones to be doing 3D printing, but we felt that we wanted to approach it the same way that we've been approaching uh, fabric manipulation, textile. So, so we wanted to see 3D printing as a tool to um, evolve textile making into many steps ahead. To be honest, I think in general, mankind is not, not really ready for anything that experimental yet. It's way too out there for the general public, but you always need, you know, the pioneers to take it as so it becomes the norm. You have to be honest and say that the technology is very far from a point where we'll readily be producing consumer friendly 3D printed clothes. The need for textiles is like one of the most basic human needs and I mean we're always going to need them. <laughs> it's like how, how does the tool allow us to kind of reinterpret what those are, what a textile is, like one of the most ancient human things out there.